Welcome back to the channel. My name is Douglas and in today's video, we're going to be taking Keyscape and putting it onto an SSD drive. So a little background while I open up this boxed set of Keyscape. This is the piano library of the collection known to be one of the better virtual piano libraries out there. And I know I'm late to the game. This has been out for years, but I've been wanting to add this to my collection. I have a bunch of native instruments, pianos, some other virtual pianos that are out there. And I've been wanting to add Keyscape, but I just haven't gotten around to it. And I've been thinking too about the Yamaha YC series and the Nord series and how, you know, we use those in live situations. We use those in church. And then you have this whole other side, which is the virtual instruments. And how do they compare? Are the virtual instruments that much better? And one issue I've had with virtual instruments is I've put them on external hard drives, but they've been traditional spinning external hard drives, which don't transfer as fast. And there's always been a slight disconnect between, you know, the playing, right? And the sound you're hearing. Now, when I film videos, you don't see that because I'm syncing everything up so it's perfectly in line. Basically, the Keyscape box set, pick this up. It comes with two non-writable USB drives, and you can either do USB or USB-C with this little kind of flips and turns around. We're gonna do regular USB because I'm gonna be using the USB-C for this SanDisk. This is the Extreme Pro, and the reason I got this one over some of the other SSDs out there, I think I paid about 150 for this, is because it has double the speed, the transfer speed of some of the traditional. So I think this is around two gigabytes a second versus one gigabyte a second for a lot of the other SSDs out there. I'm gonna go USB-C and the SSD just has a USB-C. My laptop here has a USB-C as well. So we're gonna go into that and that's gonna take my USB-C port. I only have one of those. And on the Keyscape side, you have two of these, A and B. We're gonna start with A, gonna plug that into the other side of my laptop here where I have more room. And that's gonna pop up on my computer here. It's gonna open up this directory here and you're gonna see this Keyscape installation file. Go ahead and double click that. It's gonna open it up in your default browser. And you're gonna to need to log into Keyscape with your username and password. If you don't have an account yet, go ahead and click the create new account create an account, go through the process, verify your email, and then come back and log in here. Then it's gonna ask you for the serial number. You're gonna find that within page one of the booklet here. There's a serial number sticker, and you're gonna enter that here in the serial number field, and then click on the submit button. Next, you're going to get to the Keyscape installer. There's two different versions of Keyscape. One is 80 gigabytes and the other is about 30 gigabytes. I'm gonna go for the 80 gigabytes because the SSD that I have is one terabyte. And my hope is that I can take my entire native instrument library, put that on the same SSD. So all of my instruments are on this and I can just toss that in a bag if I'm traveling and have all my virtual instruments with me versus the bigger external hard drives that I've used in the past. So we're gonna click on download and we're gonna download that installer. I'm gonna put that here in my downloads and click save. That's gonna take just a little bit. It's 225 megabytes for that. So we're gonna to go to that downloaded zip file, right click on that and extract all. We're gonna extract it right to this folder and show the files when complete. If you're on a Mac, this process might be slightly different. You're gonna still go through and extract the downloaded zip file, and then open up that new extracted zip file. You're gonna see step one is the installer, and step two is the data updater. So we're gonna start with the installer. We're gonna open that up, and then we're gonna pick Windows, because I'm on Windows. If you're installing on Mac, go ahead and select the Mac folder. Now, we've got this Keyscape installer.exe here. Important thing is I've got my SSD plugged in because I want the content of Keyscape to go onto my SSD, not onto my laptop hard drive. So we're gonna double click on the Keyscape installer and we're gonna open up that installer here on the computer. So go ahead and start to step through these install steps. We're gonna hit next after accepting. We're gonna leave the plugin folder as is. This isn't the actual content, that 80 gigabytes. This is the plugin. It's not gonna be that big and I'm gonna install that on my local computer here. 
click on next, and this is where the data is getting stored. So the Steam data folder, and it's a little bit vague, but it says, where should we install the large Steam data folder? I'm gonna copy this Spectrasonics piece. I'm gonna click browse, and I'm going to come and select my Extreme Pro SSD. We're gonna come in here, and we're going to paste Spectrasonics in here and click OK. Now, chances are it's gonna create that folder for me. If not, we're gonna to have to go and create that. But we're gonna click on Install. And then it's gonna ask us if we wanna do the full installation or the light version. So for the light version, you click No. For the full version, you click Yes. I'm gonna click yes because I do want the full installation. It says, you chose a full installation. We're gonna to have to confirm again, yes. And my SSD is empty. So I have a terabyte of space there, a thousand gigabytes. And so I've got plenty of space for this. And it's gonna take a while for this to go and install all of these files onto that SSD. You'll notice it created that Spectrasonics folder for me. And what it's gonna do is we specified the folder for the plugins and the content. And so by doing that, it's gonna be important that we don't move these files down the line because then we're gonna to have to go and update those paths within the plugins. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes I've run into this where, depending on where you plug your hard drive in, or in this case, the SSD, your drive letter might change. And so I always try to stay consistent, at least with my laptop. And then if you need to, you can update the paths, but I find to keep things easy is just always plug them into the same ports. And so back over on the computer, you can see it's working through that install. It's gonna take some time for that. So I'm gonna fast forward through that piece. All right, so as you can see, I've moved my Hammer 88 Pro over here in preparation, but I wanted to show you this. So right now, the Keyscape install or setup has paused, and I get this message that says insert Keyscape B, then click OK. You can cancel uh, the entire process by clicking cancel. We're gonna take that second USB drive that's labeled B and plug that into the USB port. I'm gonna take the A1 out, put the B1 in. But once we've plugged that in, we're gonna click OK. And that's gonna continue with the setup process. All right, now that it's done the actual extraction of the data files, we're gonna go ahead and click on the finish and run the data updater. So if we come back over to that extracted file, we're gonna to go to the step two data updater, go to windows and run the data updater. This is gonna go grab and update the most recent versions. Uh, if there are any updates to those, we're gonna step through the setup here, browse and find the Steam folder you created. So we're gonna go browse and it defaulted to that for us. We're gonna click OK. Just make sure it's in the right spot from where you sat for the data folder prior. Click Next, Install. Would you like to do the full? I'm gonna say yes. And we're gonna let that go through and do its thing. It's extracting right now, and it's finished. So we're gonna click on the Finish button. So now that we're set up, the installation's done, I wanna show you one more thing and that's setting up the standalone piece to this because that's what I'm gonna to use to just test this out a little bit. So I'll talk about my setup here in a minute. We can unplug the B card and we're done with those. We've got this installed onto our SSD and that's actually kind of warm. That's plugged in USB-C to the computer and then over here on the computer, the standalone player is in the program data folder. So go to your C drive or wherever you saved the plugins to. I'm gonna go to the C drive because that's where I did. This program data folder here, that's where it put it. It's a little faded and the way that you can see these hidden folders is you've come up to view, show, hidden items. So if you don't see program data, you can do that. Scroll down and find the Spectrasonics folder, and you'll see this keyscape.exe file right here. Now you can also find it in your start menu. It's under Keyscape. 
and it basically ties it there. So that's where it's stored, that first directory we picked during the initial card A install. We're gonna click on that Keyscape app, and because this is the very first time we're opening this, we're going to have to authorize this. So we're gonna request authorization. That's gonna open up our browser. We're gonna fill out this form here. That's gonna give us a response code that we can put in to authorize this on our computer. I'm not sure if all of this is required, but I just filled in the information that I uh, have on my computer. Click on submit. And here's the response code. I'm gonna copy this, it's in this block here. Uh, I've blanked it out for you because this is unique to my computer. You can click the copy button to copy that. Then coming back over, we're gonna put that response code, click the paste, and that's gonna put the response code in there. And then we're gonna click continue. It's asking us to restart the application, so I'm gonna close this. You can search for Keyscape, open that app up, or we can open it from here. You could also right click on this and send it to your desktop for a shortcut if you wanted but it says you are up to date. It shows us the versions. And then what we're gonna wanna do, I'm gonna close this because I don't have my controller on. If you have your controller on and plugged in already, you're good to go, but I don't. So I am going a little bit funky here. I'm going from my controller. So the M-Audio Hammer 88 Pro, I've done videos on this before. I have the USB cable plugged into just a block into my surge protector. And then I have the MIDI in out plugged into my Focusrite 8i6 audio interface. That is plugged into my computer because I'm limited on the number of inputs on my computer. So far, I'm using all four of the USB inputs. So I need another way to communicate with the controller to my computer. So I'm going MIDI into my audio interface because I wanna use the loopback function to record the standalone audio for you guys to hear. So now that the M-Audio Hammer 88 Pro is turned on, our audio interface is turned on and plugged in, I'm gonna open up that standalone plugin again. And we're just going to click in this area here to just get rid of that first screen. And it says, please load a patch. But the first thing we're gonna do is go up to view settings and we're gonna select our audio device, which is going to be ASIO, and our output device is going to be the Focusrite USB ISO for me. We're gonna go outputs one and two, that's fine. Put my headphones on here, and you'll see active MIDI inputs is the Focusrite USB MIDI. You might be using something different. So if your controller's plugged in, different controller, or you're going direct USB, you're gonna see something different here in the MIDI inputs. And then we're just gonna close the settings and select the first patch here, which is the C7 Grand Piano. We're gonna try this out. I'm gonna open up my DAW, and I'm gonna record what I'm playing so that you can hear the sounds through this standalone. So I've got waveform here. I'm going loop one and two from the focus right. I also have a microphone plugged in. That's on input two. You can hear that. That helps me sync up the audio. I'm gonna mute that for you guys, but it helps me sync it up for the video. So we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna go over here, we're going to record, and we're just gonna do a little test. Looks like it's recording, so we're good to go there. You can see that right there. So let's come back over to Keyscape here, and let's grab like the cinematic. So when you click on it, it does a please wait right here, and then loads the preview. We can hear that there. But behind the scenes, you can see this yellow bar, it's loading up the actual full sample for that. And we've got, a bunch of settings here. This isn't a video on how to use Keyscape. I just want to test out to see if the SSD provides me with faster loading times and lower so latency. And it could be I'm going about this in an entirely wrong way. But one thing to take a look at is if we come up to our settings and you'll see our audio buffer size is 192 samples. I think that's okay. So the lower your buffer size, so if we went down to like, let's say 62 samples, we're gonna get less audio quality and more um, potential for distortion, clicks, things like that in the audio. But we're gonna have lower latency because the sample size, the buffers is much smaller. 
If we go higher, 512, 1024, our audio quality is gonna be better. We're gonna have less distortion and clicks and issues with the audio, but we're gonna have a lot more latency. So if I'm recording tracks, and I'm using something where I'm, I have a good loop back into my headphones, I'll keep it pretty high so that I'm getting good quality in there. For live, I'll pull that down a little bit just because I'm playing live and I don't want as much latency there. We're gonna leave it at 192, but you could hit control panel. That'll open up your control panel and you can pick different sample sizes there. So I'm gonna check again, make sure that we're getting audio here in waveform. And let's try out just a couple of pianos here. I have my M Audio Hammer 88 Pro plugged in. I mentioned how I did that. I have the Yamaha FC4A plugged into this. Works fine, I get the damper noise. And let's come down and check out maybe the natural custom C7. I'm gonna adjust my velocity curve a little bit. I come over to M Audio. They don't have the Hammer 88 Pro. Maybe I'll throw the Keystation 88. up to the very first one, the C7 Grand Piano. As you can see, it's taking a while for it to load. I get this funky little like one note hit when the preview's ready. It's really dry, which is good for recording. Let's come over and bring in. Some beautiful piano sounds. This video is not meant to be a demo of the Keyscape sounds. I just wanted to try it out and see if I could get it to work. So I've covered a lot in this video and I'm gonna to try to edit it down so it's not a two hour video. But I wanted to show you the process of putting Keyscape onto the SSD and kind of getting started with it. So if you have any questions with anything that I went over, the sounds, the setup, anything like that, feel free to throw those down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, stay inspired, and keep making that music.